morning, saints. Father God, Father God, as we come into this edifice this morning, we want to thank you. We want to we want to thank you, Lord Jesus. As we open this service up on this morning, we want to thank you. We can't thank you enough, Lord Jesus, for what you have done and what you're doing for us. Lord Jesus, we ask that you bless each and every one of us, Lord Jesus. Bless us from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Bless the sick and the shedding. Lord Jesus, bless the pastor. Bless the first lady. Bless Pastor Mary. And all the saints of God. Lord Jesus. Bless this place. We talk about this place. Your sanctuary. Your house. Bless this house of worship, Lord Jesus. Father God, bless the children. Bless this church, God, Lord Jesus. Father God, as we, as we humbly, we're humbly asking you, Father God, to continue to bless us. Heal our bodies, Lord Jesus. Heal us, Lord Jesus. Father God, Bless us. Continue to bless you. As we come, came into this house this morning, Lord Jesus, we came in praising. And we want to glorify your name on this morning. Father God, we thank you. Thank the Lord on this morning. We love you and we thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Today I'll be reading out of Hebrews chapter 9, verses 11 through 15. But Christ being come a high price, priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands. That is so, that is to say, not of this building. Neither by the blood of goats and cows, by his own blood, he entered and once into the holy place, having ordained eternal redemption for us. For of the blood of bulls and of goats and of ashes of a heifer, sprinkling with the unclean sacrificial to the purifying of flesh. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to, to serve the living God. And for this, and for this cause, he is the, men, the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of transgression that were under the first testament that which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. You may have to receive.
welcome all of our, those who will be watching us through any social media platform. God bless you on this day also. We're in Proverbs, the 25th chapter. Proverbs 25. Starting with verse 1. Just going to read a few verses in your hearing. Proverbs 25, verse 1. And it says here, These are also Proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied out. Verse 2, it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. The heaven for height and the earth for depth and the heart of kings is unsearchable. Let us stop right there. May I ask God God's blessing on the reading of his word and the word of God is blessed on this morning. As you remain standing, I want to take a thought for this morning. God's word, your best friend. Now bow your heads for a word of prayer if you would. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you on this day. I want to give you all the glory and all the praise, Lord Jesus. As we get into your word, Lord, I pray that you allow your anointing to fall fresh on this your servant, Lord, that I may speak a word that will be uplifting, a word that will be encouraging, a word that will be so saving and so stirring, Lord Jesus. So, Lord, we need your anointing to fall fresh on this your servant, Lord. I need your anointing, Lord, that anointing that destroys every yoke, break every chain, loose the whole of the enemy. As we come and we plead the blood on this first Sunday morning, on this communion Sunday morning, we come pleading the blood. The blood that heals. The blood that saves. The blood that delivers. The blood that sets the captives free. The blood that opens blinded eyes. All oh, the blood, the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, to God be the glory. We come against every demonic force that will cease to hinder the word of God. We rebuke it in your name, Lord. We rebuke it in your name and your word will go forth. Your word will go forth. Your word will go forth. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. Put your hands together and give God some praise if you would. Hallelujah. Give God some praise. Give God some praise on this morning. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. I, I think it's so important to stop and just give God some praise. You're not praising man. You're not praising the pastor. But you're giving God some praise. God has been good to each and every one of us. And of course, the enemy doesn't want us to realize it. The enemy doesn't want us to recognize it. But that's why, and this, this just dropped in my spirit, several thoughts dropped in my spirit on this week, as I was, even as I was riding back in town. I said, oh Lord, what, what I'm gonna share with uh, your people on this Sunday, amen, first Sunday of October, here we are in a new month. Wow, we're just about at the end of this year, and God has been good to us. So it's time for us to, we must remain steadfast and unmovable. Amen? Amen. God is going to reward you for your labor. Remain steadfast. Don't give up now. Don't give in now. Don't you dare quit now. So I began to think about the word of God as I began to look at several scriptures and I said, wow, the thought, dropped, the thought dropped in my spirit, God's word, your best friend. God's word is your best friend. Each and every one of us need a friend. Everybody needs a friend. That's some person that you can share something with. And you don't have to worry about it going nowhere. Uh, whatever it is, you, you can share it and talk to this friend about it. 
If you have three good friends, you're doing awesome. If you have two, you're doing good. Hopefully you have one. Amen. We all need that friend that we can lean and depend on and, and talk to. Amen. But God's word is our best friend. God's word leads us and guides us. It directs our path. It orders our steps. It is that light unto our pathway. God's word. Amen. Amen. Woo. And you want to know that's why the enemy comes against you. That's why when you open up the word of God and you're not getting immediate understanding, the enemy tells you to close that Bible up. Close that. That book is just boring. But don't you know you got to stay with it? Yeah. Right. You got to continue to search it yeah. that you might grow and grow in the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Matter of fact, if I was going to take a subtopic, my subtopic would be search. I want to talk to you on this morning for just a few moments on this morning because I want you to get this as the guy is placing it in my spirit. When we look at the background of the text here, Solomon was the king of Israel. So Solomon was the king of all of Israel. We know that after Solomon passed away, Israel was divided into two kingdoms, the north and the south. Amen. But Solomon is the king of all of Israel. So here we have a man who was wise and powerful. Because we know, let's go back again. We know that Solomon prayed and said, Lord, God asked him, what would you want? And he said, Lord, grant me wisdom. He didn't say, give me things, give me houses or land or money, cars or any other valuables. He said, grant me wisdom. So God said, since you, you, that is your prayer request, not only am I going to grant you wisdom, but I'm going to give you other things. Yeah. So Solomon was a man with wisdom and power. Wow. He had plenty of everything. He was lacking for nothing. Money was not a problem. And you got to understand, people travel off from all over the world to come hear the words of Solomon, to sit at the feet of Solomon to see what God had given Solomon. Y'all ain't talking to me. So he is a man. This, this is a powerful man, not just to have all this riches. Amen. But he had wisdom. Although he had made some mistakes, yet he was a man of power and wisdom. And so we can listen to Solomon and we can learn from Solomon because he did make some mistakes. With all that power and with all that wisdom. So we can listen to him and learn from him that we do not make the same mistake. Am I right about it? Amen. And I'm reminded of Solomon's wisdom. There were uh, two women that came to Solomon. They were desperate. They said, both women said, Solomon, King Solomon, this is my child. The other woman said, no, this is my child. They were both crying out to Solomon saying, this is my child. One child had died. So both of them claimed that the living child was theirs. Uh, so how do you deal with such a situation when two mothers are before you pleading for their child? God gave Solomon to say, all right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to cut the child in half. I give half to this mother and half to the other mother. You got to understand, we, we know how the story goes, but you got to understand, I want you to stop and realize that the courage, the wisdom that God gave Solomon, what to say, and the courage he had to say it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a courage to say, cut the child in half. I know everybody has been sitting, standing around like, what? Is that the best solution you can come up with? Are you kidding me? But he did as God said do. I want to let you know that it takes courage to do as God says do. It takes courage to do what God tells you to do. 
before you can see the results, before you can feel the results. But you got to have courage to do what God says do. And Solomon did just that. And when he did that, the mother of the child said, no, no. Give my child to her. I don't want to see him dead. I don't want to see my child dead. If I can't have my child, at least I want my child to live. Yeah. Solomon realized that was the love of a mother. Yeah. Ooh, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Give the child to the mother. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow, what courage. When you study Proverbs, you see in the wisdom, the discernment, the courage, the trusting God. Do you really trust God? Yes. Are you allowing circumstances and the noise to sway you? Do you trust God? Your trust in God grows daily as you read his word. Right. And one of the Bible says, study to show thyself approved. A workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Yes. Hallelujah. So you got to study the word. You got to read his word daily that it becomes a part of you. That you can rightly divide the word of God. Yes. Mm. Hallelujah. Wow. See, uh, uh, the Bible says here in verse 1. 25, chapter 25, verse 1. Men of Hezekiah, men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied out. And I thought that was important that we, that we, that we highlight that because it let us know that Hezekiah men study 137 proverbs that they may gain a better understanding. They didn't, under, they didn't study to try to change it. Or try to rearrange it. Place a comma where there was a period. They didn't do that. They, they studied to get a better understanding. When you begin to study the word of God and read the word of God, you're reading and studying to get a better understanding. Once you understand it, then you, get, you can put it in your own words and it begins to live inside of you. The race is not given to the swift. And you begin to say, what does swift mean? And you define the word swift, and, and now you get a better understanding of what the word is saying. And you're able to, that begins to live inside of you. It becomes a part of you. Are you hearing me on the day? This is why we read and reread the word of God, so that it becomes a part of us. I was taking my, we were taking our granddaughter to school. We actually would pick her up from school, I think, on this particular time. And she began to talk to us about uh, nouns and uh, verbs and adjectives and all that. And so, so even though she was out of school, she was yet reviewing what she had learned in school. Ah, are you getting this? Are you getting this? And she began to announce a person, place, something, and, and, and a verb. When she get home, she go over with her. Her grandmother went over with her. She said, uh, uh, a verb, what's a verb? A verb is an action word. And uh, she asked grandfather, what is an adjective? I said, well, I believe adjective is something that describes something. Uh, well, use it in the sentence, grandfather. <laughs> she was killing me there. I said, so I said, well, let me see. The sun is red. And she began just to laugh. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, grandfather. Ha, ha. The sun is not red. The sun is yellow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But she was paying attention. She was going over, re revisiting what she had learned. Now she's applying it to her own daily life. She's getting a better understanding of what a noun is, what a verb is, what an adjective is. She's applying it to her life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. 
God's word is your best friend. Mm. Once you know it and understand it, nobody can move you from it. Uh, my little six-year-old granddaughter, uh, Zoe, I, I, can, I cannot tell her you live at 3711 Hayes Street. Now she said, no, grandfather, that's not where I live. That's not where I live. Look at the sign, grandfather. That's, do you see the sign there? That's, that's, that's where I live. That's the street I live on. Because she's learning. She know where she's taking the time to learn and she know. Now you can't move her from what she know and what she understand. When you begin to understand God's word and get it down in your spirit, everywhere in that doctrine that passed by can't move you and separate you from the word of God. In conclusion, in conclusion verse 2 says the glory of God God glory is an overwhelming force. God's glory is an overwhelming force. His glory is an overwhelming presence. His glory is an overwhelming, overwhelming power. It's an overwhelming perfection. This is why Satan doesn't want us to, to get a hold of this word and listen to this word. To, but if, when you study the word of God and you begin to grow, you begin to get better and better and better. You begin to grow, begin to grow the more and the more. There's nothing I've seen that's worthwhile that you don't have to take time and spend some time with it in order to grow in it. Amen? When you're in school and, and they're, they're learning much sooner now, the math, they're learning much sooner now than we did when we were in school. They're learning algebra a lot sooner than we did algebra. They used to learn algebra in seventh and eighth grade. I didn't learn it until ninth or tenth grade. And they learn it much sooner, but when you first start to learn it, it's not interesting. And the first thing you want to say that this teacher is boring. I got the worst teacher. You know, we used to go walk around school. I hate I got Mr. So-and-so. Oh, man. Am I right about it? We always blame it on the teacher. Ah, this class is no fun. I got the worst class. So-and-so class, they be excited in there. Ah. But you'll find out anything that's worthwhile, it takes a season where you just have to stop and learn to do it. Yeah. Be disciplined enough to learn it that you might grow and go further. Amen? Amen? Yeah. And so it is with the word of God. Study the word. Make it become a part of you. And the more you study that algebra, the more you apply that algebra, the easier it becomes. Arithmetic and division seems hard at first, but the more you do it, the easier it becomes. It becomes a part of you. Are you hearing me on the day? You got to understand. So, so the Bible says God conceals, meaning, meaning that he can't show you all of his glory. So though you're in school and though my little Zoe is learning all of these little things in school, she, she doesn't know it all yet. She needs to continue to search that she might grow the more and the more. Yeah. Amen? Because she can't learn it all at one time. It'll be too much for you. Y'all ain't getting this yet. Mm. God said, I can't show you all my glory at one time. I, I remember I was talking to sister, little sister Caitlin, and uh, they understand computers much better and much faster now. And uh, it was some things on the computer that I was learning, and I said, wow, you know how to do this? Ah, oh, pastor, that's nothing. And then she said, we grew up with computers. It was so innocent and so pure, but it was the truth. They, they've grown up with this, where we're having to learn it. We 
we having to learn how to text and send emails and all. They growing up with this. But yet, even though she's growing up with computers, there's far more knowledge that yet knowledge that's concealed from her that she yet needs to learn. She must continue to search that she might grow the more and the more. Are you hearing me on the day? Hallelujah. The key is to keep searching. We got to keep searching. There's things that God has for us. There's doors that God wants to open for us. But we must continue to search the word of God. The Bible says there's some things that are concealed right now. But God wants to reveal his glory to us. Hallelujah. The Bible says, search the heavens for height and the earth for depth. We got to search. We got to investigate. We got to examine. We got to penetrate. We got to evaluate. We've got to dedicate. We've got to appreciate. We've got to eliminate. We got to separate. I come to tell you they don't speculate, but simulate the word of God. I come to tell you that they don't tolerate, but terminate everything that's not like Christ. And say, for Christ I live, and for Christ I die. Blessed be the the name of the Lord. I'm going to give God the glory. I'm going to give God the praise. For I found out there's nobody like Jesus. I search high and low, but I come to find there's nobody, nobody like Jesus. When I look to the heavens, there's nobody like Jesus. When I look down on the earth, there's nobody like Jesus. He stretches as far as the east is, as far as the west. He's stronger, he's mightier, he's more powerful. There's nobody like Jesus. No matter what your situation, my Bible says when thou pass through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. My Bible says when thou walk through the Thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flames come upon you. I serve a mighty God. I serve a God. When you begin to search the scriptures, you will understand He's able. I said He's able. He's able to do exceeding and abundantly. Above all, you can ask. Above all, you can think, my God is able to be your peace in the midnight hour. He be your joy in the morning. He be your hope for tomorrow. He be the lifter of your soul. He be your strong tower. Oh Lord, you got the search. Search, search the word of God and allow God to bless you. Allow God to keep you. Oh Lord, somebody put your hands together. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. The word of God. The word of God is your best friend. So my question to you this morning, have you accepted Christ into your